Evantech here and in this video I will show you how I build bases in Subnautica Below Zero. So first of all let's begin with a simple starter base design and I use this design whenever I need to expand beyond the drop pod for storage and other things but I don't have the resources to build the main base yet. You should have a habitat builder by now, but if you don't have one yet, make sure to check out the video on top of your screen. To start things up with this base, you will need free titanium to build an X compartment. You will also need to build a hatch and that will bring up the starting cost to 4 titanium and 1 quartz. I prefer to place this hatch on top of the X compartment which will save you some wall space inside. This should be enough to place some storage inside as well as some plant pots to grow some food. And yes, plants will grow without power. However, if you need power, just place down a solar panel. This will cost you 2 quartz, 2 titanium and copper. I usually don't do it until I need a battery charger or a modification station. Once you get the mini base going, head on over inside and start placing the stuff that you will need. At this point, I usually have some kind of plant seeds, so I just place down my plant pots. I usually run into storage issues really quick, so I just place down wall lockers so I can store more stuff. After that, you can do whatever. You can place down a modification station, you can add a fabricator if you're too far from your life pod. And you can add a battery charger so you keep your equipment charged. Here's another base that I usually build when I don't feel like building a large main base. This is the most minimalistic main base you can have. This is because this base is just one moon pool and nothing else. Usually having two solar panels is more than enough to power this base up, but you can also expand to using thermal power plants. Obviously since this is a moon pool you will not need to build a hatch. Let me show you how I arrange my stuff inside the moon pool to use the space efficiently. As for the plant pots, I usually place them around the edge of the moon pool, that way I will save a lot of space. For the other things like battery chargers, I place them in the corners, so whenever I need to expand, I can do it easily. The edges of the moon pool are large enough to contain some wall lockers or even large storage lockers. You can also squeeze in an aquarium on the edge of each corner of the moon pool so you can store those fresh fish inside. The main thing to consider before building a large base is the power source. How do you want to power your base? So the most basic power source in this game is the solar panel which actually forces you to build bases close to the surface. You will also have to rely on the day night cycle for power. Another power source is the bioreactor, so this source of power will not limit where you can build your base, you can build it anywhere. But remember, this will require maintenance. This also means that you either have to scavenge for biomass like catching fish and finding plants, or you have to grow your own biomass by planting plants and breeding fish in alien containment units. The best source of energy that you can grow inside is the Preston's fruit. Once you get some materials that can be used in the bioreactor, you simply drop them in. Power restored. All primary systems online. It will take some time, but eventually the biomass will be consumed and you will have to replace it. As you can see, the bioreactor has a lot of slots, so you can just drop in whatever you can. 
An interesting fact is that the Preston's plant not only will give you fruits, but you can also use the leaves to power the reactor. As I have mentioned before, not only can you use plants, but you can also use the alien fish and their eggs as well. In this case, the Arctic peeper is the best source of energy. As for the best plant that grows underwater, it's the gel sac, and this one will also give you a lot of energy, and it's easy to maintain. Once you pick up a bunch of them, just make sure to hit them a bunch of times to retrieve some seeds and replant them. Now let's go back to our reactor to fill it up. And there we go, that should be enough to charge the base for a little while. Another source of power is nuclear energy and this is kind of expensive to run in my opinion. For it to run you will have to make nuclear rods. And let's see how much a reactor rod costs. So you will need a uraninite crystal times 2, a lead, titanium and glass. In this case you are not restricted on the location where you can build your base. The downside is that you will have to look for uraninite crystals to build some rods and also there is a limited amount of uraninite crystals on the map. So I saved the best thing for last, in my opinion this is the best source of energy. As long as you build in a specific location or you transmit power to your base. And the thing that I'm talking about is geothermal energy. And here's why this is my favorite source of energy. So first of all, you don't have to maintain anything. All you have to do is place it down near any volcanic activity. You kinda are limited where you can build, but you can also use power transmitters to build anywhere. Once you build a single power transmitter and your base is not far from the source, it should connect automatically. Thank you for watching till the end. I also have some cool concepts for main bases, so if you want to see that from the channel, make sure to comment down below. This is Avantech, signing off. I'll see you below zero.